270,000 strong, which is a lot. The concept behind Toastmasters is to improve their speaking and leadership skills by attending one of the 13,000 clubs worldwide. So we're here in the studio today with Charmaine, Gus, Scott, Carolyn, and Jean. And we also have some listeners and photographers here in the studio, and I'm very excited uh, for all of them, for all of you guys to come in today. Welcome. How are you? Thank you. How are you? Fantastic. Great. So there's a lot of people here in the studio. We have to start off. Let's go uh, from my left, which is your right, uh, to uh, the end by saying your name and your title. Hi, I'm Gene Puffer, and I'm the co-chair of the Las Vegas Toastmasters Speakers Bureau for or people who want to speak outside of Toastmasters meetings at charity and nonprofit events. I'm Charmaine Gus. I'm running for Congressional District 1, um, Gus for us, and I'm new in Toastmasters. I'm in the Republican Toastmasters, and I love it. My name is Scott Pritchard. Ecstatic to be here. I was fortunate to take third in the World Championship of Public Speaking last year, a six-month competition. I also have my own show, Laugh and Stay Motivated, every Friday night at Alexis Park. And for those of you who like to laugh, which I hope is everyone, absolutely, I do stand-up comedy and host the show every Saturday night on the Strip, Planet Hollywood. Happy to be here. I'm Carolyn Pelletier. I belong to six Toastmaster clubs. I'm the Vice President of Public Relations in five of those clubs, and you could just say that I am a Toastmaster addict. <laughs> we love to hear that. So, you know, first, how long have you been with Toastmasters, and tell us how you became interested in how you joined Toastmasters. Carolyn? I joined Toastmasters about four years ago, almost four years ago. The reason that I joined was I literally went into the club kind of kicking and screaming. My supervisor at the time told me that I needed to work on my communication skills. So I looked at some options. I joined my first club, which was Voice Links. And I joined them because when I went out on the website, they had such smiling, happy faces. I thought, well, there's a club I can go to. And I, they became a part of my family. Unfortunately, I still lost that job, but I have moved on to many Toastmaster clubs now. I belong to several. I get so much satisfaction and enjoyment out of it. Uh, my communication skills has increased profoundly since then, and I have also worked on getting outside of my comfort zone, outside of my box. I just finished a performance workshop, performance showcase with Christopher Chandler, Productions. Wow. I sang on stage and I did five minutes of stand up comedy, something I'd never done before. So that was getting me out of my comfort zone. I'm also taking another workshop right now, a comedy, stand up comedy workshop with Don Barnhart. And we will be putting on a show on April 15th, a Sunday evening, for anyone that wants to come to that show. And we will be doing five to ten minutes of stand-up there as well. Stand-up comedy, and stand we're going to see comedy. you there, right? Yes, definitely. See you doing that, so. that stand-up comedy. So we have people from all over the realm, right, uh, here in the station, here in the studio, and you all are a part of Toastmasters, and this is wonderful. And um, I, I know that you started Toastmasters. Um, some are new. And uh, tell us how that has helped your personal career um, right now. Well, each of the clubs that I belong to have a little bit different focus. Scott mentioned evaluations a little earlier. He and I both belong to a club called Jackpot, where it's the home of the 30-minute evaluation. So if you really want to hone your skills, you want to come to that type of a club because you get a lot of evaluation from everyone in the room, not just a one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes you have to be a little thick-skinned about it, but you learn by leaps and bounds how to change and improve your speaking skills, your speech, whatever, your preparation from what, whatever it is you're trying to do, a keynote address or whatever, uh, you'll get a lot of help that way. A couple of the other clubs I belong to, one is called Curtain Call, the focus is more on dramatic theater type things. 
another club is Hecklers Anonymous. We work on stand-up comedy, humor, those type of skills. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my other clubs is the Lunatics. We work on storytelling <laughs> skills oh. and try and promote that kind of a thing. So each of the clubs that I've chosen to belong to work on a little bit different skill set and mm -hmm. I'm trying to mesh them all. And then I do have a couple of clubs that are just standard meetings where you go in and you do your speech and you have an evaluator. We do our table topics as um, Charmaine was mentioning, they call theirs sound bites. Some other clubs may call them something different. They might do them in a different order. They bar might do a backwards meeting. Bar room topics. Bar room topics. They all drink to that. Mm -hmm. Wow. So Those must be interesting. The, the clubs <laughs> themselves can expand on the focus that their members want mm -hmm. for specific areas. That's what I find beneficial is none of them are all cookie cutter there everyone is unique everyone they're is all different. very different yeah from what you're explaining now you were saying the lunatics club and I find mm -hmm. that really interesting because it's all about storytelling uh, what is one example of or one story that you've shared there we have two contests a year for the lunatics that are specific to our club one is called the Feg Hood Contest, which is will be in May, our, at one of our May meetings. What does that stand for? A Feg Hood is an outrageous pun at the end <laughs> okay. of your story. So you would take such a phrase such as, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Okay. We had a gentleman that won that a couple of years ago doing a whole story about uh, trying to get someone to lose weight wearing later hosen. So his pun or his last line was, you can later holes in Walter, but you can't make him shrink. Oh. <laughs> so that's what I a like fake that. hood is. Okay. And okay. then we have a liar's contest, which is we hold in December. A couple of years ago, we invited jackpot speakers to join us in that contest. Scott is actually the first recipient of the liar's contest. Uh -oh. Of the so traveling trophy. can't believe trophy. anything that you're talking, you're telling us here. Yes, exactly. And his, he took <laughs> that, that lie. Be a politician. Yes. <laughs> there you go. You're still right next to But he took that lie and expanded it and went on to compete in a tall tale mm -hmm. using that same story. So it kind of spawned from there. There's okay. a, an abundant amount of clubs there. Now, if can you name your favorite club that you're a part of or that, I don't know, you don't want to, you know. Be kind of biased but if you can right now on the top of your head name your favorite club that you're a part of my home club the lunatics is my favorite because i helped found that club with the founder is clayton williamson and unfortunately he had to go back home to georgia where he lives um, due to an illness but the, the club I just love the club because he founded it on storytelling, which is something I wanted to focus on at the time. I also get a lot of information and enjoyment out of Jackpot because of the evaluations. There's so much evaluations. This year, I will be competing at the district for Division H in the International Speech Contest that Scott did last year and, and took all the way to third in the world. Wow. And I'm very excited about that but I got so much help from all of my clubs, but a lot of extra help from the jackpot members because, the, I mean, they just take it, you down to the most minute details on how to make it better and improve things. Wow, well, good luck to that, and I definitely want to hear uh, the progress of that, so i got to have you back in here. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure that. you all want to hear what's going on with Toastmasters and uh, with Carolyn and where she's going with that. Now, Scott, are you allowed to um, compete again? Yeah, in fact, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I want to promote my dear friend Carolyn Peltier. I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan. And I know six, I'm a better speaker today than I was six months ago. And a lot of people have said the speech that I competed with this year is better than, than the speech that got me third in the world. Wow. That was until I ran into Carolyn. Uh -oh. And you have to hear her speech to appreciate it. And she took me out in the division contest. And if I'm going to lose, there's no one I would rather lose to more than this young lady because she spoke from the heart. She connected better than anyone I've seen in quite some time. And she has my love and support as she goes forward. So, again, 
you need to uh, check out her speech. Well, I really look forward to hopefully coming in and seeing you guys talk, as well as just joining a Toastmasters and you know just observing of what's happening. Thank you. And there are clubs that meet at six o'clock in the morning and clubs that meet at seven thirty at night. So there's a whole gambit of time. So yeah, you know whatever your availability week. is, you can. There's no excuse. Basically. There's a club every. Go to Toastmasters.org. People on the street have often asked, what is the cost? What is the investment? To me, the better question would be, what is the return? Mm -hmm. The return, I'm a business person, so I'm always looking at return on investment. Mm -hmm. Right. And it is the best 36 to $46 right. dollars I've ever invested, hands down. That's so great. And it's not just the speaking skills you get, but I have met lifelong friends and people that I respect so much, Scott and Jean. Phil that's in the studio with us and Not Charmaine that I just met, <laughs> you know. Um, but I, I also have friends that will be friends, that I'll be friends with for life through Toastmasters because there is so much love and support from those people. Because of Toastmasters, I joined an improvisation group, the Las Vegas Improvisation Players, founded by one of the Toastmasters, John Kindy. They are the longest clean-burning improvisation group in Las Vegas. We're celebrating our 12th year this year. It is clean-burning family fun. We meet at 6.30 to 8.30 every Thursday at the American Heritage Academy at the corner of Sand Hill and Patrick. You can come in and join us for a session for free if you decide to join. It's $10 a workshop or there's another I think it's 50 for 10 workshops or something like that. We put on shows once a month that are family friendly that we invite people to come to. You can get two for one tickets. So for $5 a person, you can come in and, and enjoy a clean burning show for an hour and a half. And without Toastmasters, I would not have found that. I always wanted to do improv, but family friendly. That, it's family yes. friendly. And then again, I'm doing a stand up comedy showcase for people that are learning how to do stand-up comedy on April 15th on Sunday. And if you want more information about that, you can email me at kkinnv at yahoo.com. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you again for coming in. Greatly appreciate it. And I'm definitely going to have you guys back in so we can discuss this all over and um, even more of what you guys have been doing. So I can't wait to see the progress of uh, Toastmasters.